Let's chat about CPI, and we're also going to look at where rates are going for the rest of 2024. So looking at the CPI number that came out this morning, consumer prices rose 0.4% in February and 3.2% from a year ago. So let's get into a little bit more detail. So as we said, it increased 0.4%, 3.2% from a year ago. That's the total CPI index. Now, when we look at the core index, which is stripping out the ever so volatile food and energy that you guys consume on a daily basis, we were up 0.4% on the month and 3.8% on the year. Both were one-tenth of a percentage higher than the forecast. So what does that mean overall? It kind of means that inflation has absolutely come down. I mean, we were around 9% back in 2021, beginning of 2022, and now we're about half of that. But it seems like inflation at these points has just become a little bit more sticky and a little bit more volatile at the same time. Markets right now, they're actually kind of digesting the information. So if we look at this, the NASDAQ is up 0.25, the Dow is basically flat, and the S&P is up about a quarter of a percentage. But it's we're eight minutes into the market as I'm making this video right now, and it's just kind of digesting information. So to me, what this reaction tells me, people are very unsure. They're unsure of where rates are going to go. They're unsure of how the Fed is going to continue to control inflation. We have a lot more information coming throughout this video. So let's get into the Bureau of Labor Statistics actual release that they put out this morning. So here was all the numbers that they said that we already went over, but I wanted to come down here and go into specifics. So when we look, these are broken down month by month and then an, un, and then an adjusted, excuse me, unadjusted 12 month duration ending in the previous month. So we would be ending in February of 2024. Food, flat. I mean, it's it's up 2.2% per, 2 .2 over that 12 month period, but it's flat for the month. Food away from home, meaning restaurants, um, still flat. But when you get down to a couple of things, gasoline. So gasoline through January was down 3.3% month over month. And this month, it was up 3.8%. I was just talking to Tim. And he said that it is absolutely, prices are going up, especially here down in Florida. I paid $125 to fill my truck two days ago, which is absurd, but that is what they are. Gas prices are absolutely coming up. I'm sure you're noticing the same thing, filling your cars. Let's see what else we have. Uh, electricity continued to increase. Utilities in continued to increase. Let's see what is happening with uh, used cars. So new vehicles are down. This is a big one because new vehicles, if you guys remember during COVID, were absolutely out of control. Well, there was no inventory because of the chip shortages. Prices were just astronomical because if you could get a new vehicle, you would just grab it. Used vehicles are actually down as well. I'm sorry, are up slightly, ever so slightly, but down. I'm, when I said down, I mean down off of the ridiculous highs they were at. We couldn't find used vehicles anywhere. People were snatching them up like crazy because they needed new cars. Apparel, up a little bit, healthcare services and medical commodities, up a touch, shelter, everything, these numbers are up under 1%. Now, transportation services, up 1.4%, meaning planes, trains, et cetera. And the reason I'm saying this is, I saw an article this morning about a guy who went and bought two train tickets from Chicago to somewhere else, wherever the Chicago train line goes from. And he said it was astronomically priced, it was almost double what it was a couple of years ago. So those are still high if you've flown lately, you know that prices are still high and they're nickel and diming you for so many different things on the airlines because they need to get by. So that leads us to the point of saying, okay, where are interest rates gonna go? Because that's the ever so important question that everybody wants to know. Let's go over to the CME Group Watch Tool. And this is basically the market saying where they think interest rates are going to go for the rest of the year and into 2025, but we're gonna look for the rest of the year. So when you look at this, and this moves minute by minute, so it's as the market moves, the interest rate watch tool is going to move. And you guys can find the CME group, Google CME group, Fed watch tool, and it's kind of fun to watch. So here we go. As of this morning, 99% say that we're going to stay the same at five and a quarter to 5.5%. So we're not going to be cutting interest rates. And that's probably because we just saw the CPI number came out a little bit higher than expected. Going to May. May is about the same, 89% we're, we're going to stay consistent. It isn't until June that you start to see the majority going and saying, okay, we're going to cut interest rates and we're going to go to five to five and a quarter percent. That's a 25 basis point cut. And let's see by the end of the year, by the end of the year, we're sitting here between 4.25 
and 4.75. So about the average of the market says we're going to finish the end of the year by 4.5%. Now, with that being said, this can change. Let's say that inflation goes up, um, I'm going to call it one and a half percent next month. I don't think that's going to happen, but let's say that happens. These numbers will very, very, sw they'll sway away from where they're at right now. You might see this back up here to 5.25%. So this moves minute to minute, and that's the reason that I'm telling you that. But pay attention to this. The market is typically correct, but the market is also very reactionary on what happens out of the Fed presidents and Jerome Powell, the chairman. So going back to Jerome Powell speaking last week to Congress or testifying to Congress, there are still other things going on in the economy. And one of the big things, it's March right now of 2024. And if you remember back to March of 2023, it seems like such a long time ago and it seems so distant, like it didn't even happen. And so many other regional banks, if you guys will remember, there were banks like Charles Schwab that were down 40% in some cases, Key Bank down 40 to 60% in some cases. Now they rebounded, but what was that all about? It was about weakness in the regional banks. And Jerome Powell did come out and as an answer to a congressperson that said, what are we doing about the commercial real estate market? We have these regional banks that are lending to commercial real estate. There's weakness there. There's not people going back to work. There's a lot, there's abandoned buildings. You're seeing it all across the news that there is weakness in the commercial side of lending or that they have a loan and they're not gonna pay their loan. They're gonna default, whatever it is. And Jerome Powell did say, we have talked to a lot of regional banks. There are going to be more regional banks that go under. We want to put them in the best position that they know that they need to have liquidity, they need to have capital, they need to be prepared for this, but there will be more regional banks that go under. Now, when you go to the big banks, he said there's really no worry. When you're looking at your Bank of America, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, Chase, etc., these are the banks that you're really not going to have to worry about. As a matter of fact, I think that a lot of those big guys will continue to buy up the small ones. But when we talk about interest rates and where they're looking, if you're starting to cut interest rates, why would you be cutting? Do we want to be cutting interest rates in times when inflation is still sticky? And inflation is clearly sticky. We've been hovering around this 3.5 to 3.9 percent for quite some time. I don't think that cutting the interest rates is the best option. The one thing that I fear and that I've said, and we've said many, many times on this channel, is that you go into what is called a double dip recession. And this is what happened in the 70s and 80s. You start, you increase rates really high. Now granted their interest rates were 18, 18, 17%, and you guys will probably remember this, that are older. They controlled inflation, and then they decided to cut interest rates, and they cut them a little bit too quickly. And inflation came down, and then inflation rose right back up as, started, as soon as you started cutting. Now, I will give Jerome Powell a lot of credit for this one. He has acknowledged that, and he said that we do not want to do that. We'd rather have rates be around at, this, at these levels or a little bit higher for a long period of time than to start to cut them. Why would you start to reduce rates? And that's kind of the confusion that I have right now. Are we just cutting interest rates just so that people can go and borrow? Because remember, guys, yes, we're sitting at five, to, five and a quarter to 5.5% 5 .5 interest rates, that's actually a pretty healthy number. I think sitting around that 3.5 to 4% is a pretty healthy number. And remember, we've come off a decade of nearly 0% interest rates. That is not normal. That is not healthy. You have to have some type of interest rate out there. You want to have some type of inflation out there. Inflation cannot be zero and interest rates cannot be zero. It just doesn't work that way. That's not how the entire economic monetary policy of any substance works. It just doesn't work that way. And we need to kind of remember, that's not the goal. That should not be the goal. At least I don't know if it is the goal, but that should not be the goal for a healthy economy to work. So we might be talking about PPI later this week. We might be talking about some earnings reactions come up, that come out this week. We're offering a trial right now in our community where we talk about this stuff all the time, $7 for seven days. Click the, the link in the description below and you guys have a great day.